Today I'll be teaching. Never mind. I'll be doing a beginner's guide to whoever wants to join this hobby or just stuff I look out for in general when I'm buying keyboards. Before we move on to the video, this video is sponsored by Devoom. Devoom and their Pixu 64. From 1st to 14 February, they're having a Valentine's Day sale using codes Level 10 and Level 15. And the Pixu 64 is $20 off right now. The Pixu 64 is a screen that can be basically used anywhere and for any purpose. You can put up some artwork from the online community for room decoration, track all your social media analytics, even integrate Spotify, and you can draw in real time if you're an art person. So yeah, 1st to 14 February, Valentine's Day sales codes go check them out link in the description down below thank you for sponsoring this video divu and we're back to the video first up i'm gonna go through some basics starting with keyboard sizes if you didn't know keyboards actually have different sizes and there's no correct answer on which size is the best it is all down to personal preference the difference in sizes is usually the main features which include the number pad the arrow keys and the function keys starting with the biggest boy the full size keyboard, it includes all the features, a number pad, the arrow keys and all the function keys. And then we have our TKL keyboards, they are basically full size keyboards without the number pad, so you still have your F row and your arrow pads. Next up you have your 75% layout, it is a more compact version of the TKL keyboard, with basically the same features as the TKL, arrow keys and your F row, it is just more compact in size so that it fits more nicely on your desk. And on to my favourite layout, 65%. Once you are in the 65% territory, you lose all your F row keys, but you still have your arrow keys and I think that's most important for most of us gamers. I guess, not really. As for 60%, this is the most minimal setup you have, without any F rows, arrow keys or number pad. And of course we have a 40%, I do not know how to use this keyboard, so yeah. Okay, so that's the keyboard sizes, next up I'm gonna go through switches. We have 3 main categories of switches, there are many more but I'm just gonna go through these main 3 switches. Clickies, tactiles and linears. As you can imagine, clicky switches are basically the most well-known gaming keyboard switches. These include your Razer Greens or your Cherry MX Blues. These produce a really loud clicking noise when you press your key. And then we have a tactile switch. This is basically having the same tactile bump when you're clicking on a clicky switch but without the clicky sound. And finally, we have my favourite tile switch, linear switches. These are supposed to be as smooth as butter without any tactile bumps or clicks. What I would recommend if you do not know what switches you like is go to an electronic store that sells Razer keyboards or Logitech keyboards, try out clicky switches, try out tactile switches and linear switches. From there you'll know your personal preference and what you like to type on on a daily basis. Or maybe one of your friends is a keyboard guy so you can just hit him up. Next up, I'm going to talk about the 3 main things that keyboard enthusiasts look out for in their own personal keyboards. Number 2 is the sound, the acoustics of the keyboard. Number 2 is the feel, the feel of how the keyboard feels like when you're typing on it. And number 3 is how it looks. Starting out with sound, we have a few different sound profiles. Talky, clacky, poppy and many more but I'm just going to go through some of it. Basically, how a keyboard sounds is actually named after a sound profile. And as a keyboard person, what you're trying to do is try to achieve your favourite sound profile with an optimised typing experience that you enjoy and at the same time looks aesthetically pleasing to your own eyes. Okay, that's enough for the basics. I'm going to go through some keyboards that I would recommend you buying and what websites I go to. So every single keyboard that I'm about to list has Type-C detachable connection and RGB. Number 1. KBD Fans I think this is one of the most friendly websites to beginners out there. KBD Fans is pretty well known worldwide so you don't have to worry about getting scammed or whatsoever. It might be a little pricier site for a beginner. But more about KBD Fans, KBD Fans is actually famous for two main keyboards, the KBD67 Lite and the Tofu60. The Tofu60 is basically your mid-tier beginner option for everyone. It is a tray-mounted keyboard, this don't be scared about the words. It is a very basic keyboard, every single basic keyboard usually uses tray mount. It's actually really simple, it's probably easier than Lego so you don't have to worry about mounting at all, PCB or whatever stuff. And to reassure you, there's actually about uh, hundreds of thousands of videos on Tofu 60s out there on YouTube. There are guides, tutorials, moddings, everything you can find about the Tofu 60. There is definitely one guide out there to help you build your keyboard. So why would I recommend the Tofu 60? And that's because it has some good base features. These include a high profile aluminum case, south facing sockets, hot swappable PCB and different plate options. These are very good features you want to look out for on your keyboard. Realistically, for the second place I would probably go to is Amazon. It is it ships worldwide, it works for everyone, everyone can access Amazon. So Amazon is my second choice. As a first keyboard and a beginner to this hobby, I think this keyboard is a staple in the community. I started with a GK61, Squashy Boy started with a GK61, 
So I'm pretty sure many of the keyboard enthusiasts out there have started with a GK61 as their first ever keyboard kit. It's basically a starter kit for anybody out there who wants to get into the hobby. And I'm about 98% sure that once you build your GK61, you will dig further into this hobby. Similar to the Tofu 60, it is a 60%. 62%, if you didn't know, is one of the most popular layouts for custom keyboards. So what's the difference between this and the Tofu? The GK61 is made from plastic compared to the Tofu 60, which is made from aluminum. There's only one plate option and you have north facing sockets. If you're wondering what are north facing or south facing sockets, there is an interference going on between cherry profile keycaps, which is one of the most common keycap profiles in the world. So when you use cherry profile keycaps and north facing sockets, there might be an interference. But in my very honest point of view, I have built over at least 10 keyboards with north facing sockets and cherry profile keycaps and have never really ran into north facing interference. Even if there was, it was probably very minimal such that I couldn't even realize. I am probably gonna get cancelled for this, but it is my own op opinion. So yeah, with a hot swappable PCB and basically a normal kit for you to build with, tree mounted as well, it is extremely easy for any beginner to pick up. And for videos online, there is probably more than Tofu 60 on how to build your GK61, how to mod your GK61 to sound better, and probably any kind of guide and tutorial for you to watch. Next up is for those who want their 65% or 75% kits. On this topic, I would actually highly recommend Keychron with their Dynamic Duo, the Q1 and the Q2. It is cheaper than the Tofu 60 but a little more expensive than the GK61. They are really great kits to work with and here is why. You have your hot swappable PCB, south facing sockets and a case made from aluminum. Unlike the previous two tray mounted keyboards, these keyboards are actually gasket mounted. And if you didn't know, gasket mounts are actually much better compared to tray mounts. Gasket mounts basically provide you with a softer and bouncier typing experience. And if you are worried about how to mount the keyboard whatsoever, Keychron actually has everything mounted for you, so all you have to do is throw in your switches and keycaps. As for videos on these two keyboards, they are extremely popular and, and you should have no trouble finding any videos on guides, tutorials or mods for these keyboards. As for TKL keyboards, I don't really know what is out there, so have fun guys. Psych, I'm kidding. Uh, TKLs aren't really my thing, but I have tried a few TKLs in my Time. A good budget option for TKL is probably the MK870. I have yet to do a video on it, but I have tried it before and seen some specs and details about it and it's a pretty good keyboard. It is a hot swappable keyboard with south facing sockets and made from plastic. However, it is as cheap as a GK61. It is tray mounted and I do believe that budget TKLs aren't really easy to come by. So yeah, I'm not really too familiar with the TKL scene on the keyboard community but if you have any, you can comment that down below. Okay, the past few keyboards I have covered are basically called keyboard kits. They basically include your case, plate and PCB. What you need to buy aside from the keyboard kit is switches and keycaps. For switches, there are many many vendors out there. There are a lot of vendors out there selling switches. There aren't any specific ones that are cheaper or better. I would recommend you searching it on Google and going through the websites listed for you. Compare the prices and the shipping and you might find a few dollars off. Some recommendations from me for good budget switches. The Echo CS series, the Echo Jelly series, the KTT series, and Gateron Milky Yellows. Before we buy a switch, let's say I want to buy an Echo Rose Red. What I would do is search up an Echo Rose Red typing test on YouTube, go through a few of them and see if you like the sound of it. One last thing before I move on to keycaps, which is the most important part for switches, lube. A huge part of this hobby is lubing your switches. Some switches might say that they are factory looped or pre looped but trust me when I say that lubing your own switches will provide a much better experience for you. It is the best thing you can ever do. No matter how long it takes, you're basically going to use your keyboard nearly on a daily basis, so why not throw on the extra 4-5 to five hours of extra effort just to make your keyboard sound and feel a little better. And if you are wondering what kind of loop to get because there are different kinds of loop, Crytox 205 Grade 0. You can check out Kinetic Labs for this, and if you are a fellow Singaporean, you can check out K.Tex on Shopee. Okay, moving on to keycaps, I won't be covering this as much because these are pretty easy to come by. You can literally go anywhere to buy keycaps, Amazon, AliExpress, Banggood, Drop, Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. If you are looking for budget options, look out for a material called PBT. This usually costs a little lesser compared to the expensive keycaps. One of the keycap sets I would recommend is Double Shot PBT by Kinetic Labs. They have their octopus and whale keycap sets looking really nice. The final category I'm going to go through is those who prefer buying a keyboard straight up and then upgrading them in the future instead of buying a keyboard kit. Number 1. The GOAT of all pre-built keyboards. The Royal Clutch 61. A 60% wireless keyboard with your choice of Gateron Red, Brown or Blue switches. 
It is hot solvable, the case is made of plastic. For the price point, I think it is really worth it and in my opinion, one of the best you can get for its price. They have this in different sizes as well. 60 keys, 68 keys, 71 keys, 84 keys and 87. So this will basically fit all your preferences unless you're a full size kind of guy. There are tons of videos on how to mod this keyboard as well. Once you remove your switches and keycaps, you are basically having a GK61 some sort of. And lastly, I will go with Gamma K. If you're an RGB lover, you, this keyboard is for you. The Gamma K K61 is a hot swappable 60% keyboard. They have it in different sizes as well. This keyboard is made with a translucent case so that RGB and underglow can shine through the case. We have a choice of red, yellow, black, brown or blue switch. And the best thing about it is south-facing sockets. This is one of the rare keyboards that has south-facing sockets on a pre-built keyboard. So this is a pretty cool thing to see. So yeah, I think I have barely scratched the surface of the keyboard community and the keyboard hobby. But I hope this guide actually piqued your interest or helped you gain more confidence in buying your own keyboard. So if you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and click subscribe if you like more keyboard content. Leave a like because it only takes about like one second to do so and it does me a huge favour and I did a favour for you by explaining everything. So, trade, yeah. Leave a comment down below about what you think about this video and what you think I could have included. Maybe I do a second one on like a deeper dive into the keyboard hobby but aside from that, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Hi. Thank you Divoom for sponsoring the video. I love my new Divoom stuff. Mm.